Hi everyone, I'm back, it's my second podcast, and um, like I promised in the first one, I'm going to share stuff on different topics like guiding your children online. Um, this is something that I always um, talk and write about, if you go to my blog, choma.net, that's C-H-I-O-M-A-H, Net. You see several articles on guiding your children, their social media usage, their online usage. It's you know it's something that I'm quite particular about because you cannot, um, you know, in as much as you might say, oh, I don't have Wi-Fi at home or my child doesn't have a phone, cutting off your child's access to the internet completely is really difficult because in school they might be exposed to it. So you need to, you know, set guides and guide them properly online guide that their online activity it's very very important so now that we a lot of schools are you know learning online having class classes online even if you you belong to the school of thought where you were like oh my child is not going online at all at home you might have had to rescind that decision now because your kids have you know ipads they have laptops and they're doing a lot of stuff online so we need to understand what's going on and know how to help them and guide them because the internet really like i always say is a place of the good the bad and the ugly the good there's so much amazing information online you can do anything online you want to write a book you want to do anything you want to do and it's an amazing resource it has helped lives But then there's a lot of dangerous stuff. There's the bad and there's the downright ugly. There's child pornography. There's um, there's um, cyber bullying. There's all sorts of crazy stuff. So we need to guide our children, you know, so they don't go there and get into trouble. Okay, a lot lot, people have actually died meeting strangers online, and you know they've been exposed to all sorts of crazy stuff. So we need to make sure our children are safe when they're online. Okay, and um, all the things you know. First of all, first off, you need to get on board. You need to understand what it is to be online. You need to understand the internet to an extent. You cannot be one of those parents that has their necks in their their heads in the sand. And you just you're like, oh, you know, I don't understand the internet. It's too complicated. No, you must have at least a basic understanding of the internet, of how it works, different apps. You need to know what it is that your kids are doing online. That your children are doing online you need to know so if they are doing if they're on edmodo or whatever or google classroom you need to understand those apps to an extent okay um, if they're on facebook are they old enough to be on facebook you need to understand these things so first of all you need to get on board get a social media account yourself go online you know any parent you know now who's saying oh i'm not online but my children are online you better have a rethink it might be necessary for you to get online and know to go online and know what and see what they're up to and you know and be able to guide them properly when you see what they're even being exposed to it will help you know how to direct them further and keep them safe and then another thing that's really important is talking to your children you need to have these discussions with your children and you have to have them frequently talk to them about the internet, how, you know, what they should do. Um, I've been having discussions with, with my teenagers about how they need to turn in their phones. They're always like, oh, my phone is off at night. I'm like, I know it's off at night, but please give it to me because I don't want you to get up at night and, and, and suddenly remember you need to browse and then, you know, there's, there's so much information that they just don't need. So I talked talk to them about privacy setting, about not allowing, you know, not follow, you know, not allowing strangers to follow their accounts um, and just how to behave online, not... You know, not putting danger, uh, not putting personal information out there, not um, saying things online that you know could be held. They could be held accountable for. For instance, you, maybe a teacher in school upsets you. Do not go and put a message on your social media account saying, "I do not like Mr. So so and so." It's not necessary. Okay, so you have to have discussions with your children to let them know how they should conduct themselves online, how to be careful online, okay, how they should avoid strangers and the like. Those discussions are important because at the end of the day, your child will not be de- will not always be with you. And you, they need to have information that will help them make the right choices, okay? And then um, you need to also, I mean, when you're having the, the discussions with them, tell them how to avoid hot topics, Some discussions are just not necessary. They shouldn't spread gossip about their friends or about their teachers or whoever. They shouldn't spread rumors online. They should avoid um, election um, arguments, 
religious arguments, stuff like that. Places that we can really get heated. They need to really avoid it. Facebook is always one place that is crazy around election time because of such, you know, crazy arguments. Tell your children that they need to stay clear of stuff like that, okay? They just don't need it. So talk to them about how they need to behave and conduct themselves online. Then also you as a parent have to do your due diligence. When there's so many, there's always a new app coming up. If it's not Likey, it's TikTok, it's this, it's, there's always one new app coming up. You need to do your research and find out if it's okay for your children to use certain apps. Are they safe for your children? Recently, I was talking to a friend and she was saying, oh, how her child's school is doing um, some online learning and they're referring children to YouTube. Now, YouTube is a great resource, but also <laughs> there's, you know, this a lot could go wrong when a child is just going on YouTube and, you know, clicking, 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 and suddenly you could, you could be faced with pornography or something crazy. So you need to be careful. So we need to do our due diligence and make sure our kids are not being exposed to the wrong kind of stuff online. Um, you know, recently my daughter wanted to join this, um, I can't remember what app it was, some social networking app, and she's 12, she's almost 13. And um, I told her that she couldn't, you know, and I didn't just say you can't, I actually went to Common Sense Media and sat down with her and we looked through the reviews for that particular app. We looked for the age, you know, you know, the appropriate age for usage and we saw that she was way below that the age. And I was like, you know, and she was like, oh, my friends, you know, I'm wondering why my friends are honest. Maybe their parents didn't check, you know, but let's look at it. Let's see all the dangers of this app. And by the time she looked through, she was like, ah, mom, you're actually right. Yeah, I think that's a, this is a bad idea. I'm no longer interested in this particular app. So do your due diligence do you check reviews, you know, see if this particular thing is okay or appropriate for my child. You know, that's very, very, very important. Do your due diligence. Um, and then, you know, when you talk to your children, tell them the importance of pausing before they post anything. Like I said, if they're online, that's not the place to say, oh, I hate my teacher or this person upset me in class. They need to ask themselves. So there's an acronym that I learned somewhere, and the acronym, I think it's, um, is it truth? Truth. I think, or something like that. Is it truth? I think it's truth. So it's like, is it true? Uh, is it responsible? Is it, I can't remember the acronym, never mind, but basically, is it true? Is it responsible? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Do they have to post that information out there? So they should take themselves through, they should ask themselves a few questions and to, you know, before they go ahead and post. They should never air their dirty linen online or engage in unnecessary online arguments because the internet never forgets. Even when they delete and delete and delete, it might still be lurking somewhere and they might regret it. So teach them the art of pausing before they text or type anything. Is it necessary? Is it true? Is it inspiring? And... Just let them wait in their mind. And is it kind? Is it something kind? Now I, I remember the acronym. The acronym is THINK, okay? So is it true? Is it honest? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And is it kind? Those are the, you know, that's a way they, they can, um, it's an acronym that they can think of um, while trying to post anything online. THINK. And then um, you, sh you, you need to make sure they limit their time online. So if you leave a teenager or a young child, they can be online all day. So teach them. So if, they, if they're doing online school, what does online school end? After online school, if they want to do some other things online, maybe you give them an hour or two, but they should not spend their whole day online, limit their time online. You can create a family internet plan where you tell them how long they're meant to be online. You can, like I said, discuss all these things, you know, and watch them. And um, just you know, make sure they're not constantly glued to their apps on their phones or their laptops, you know, make sure they're actually learning when they're there. And even when they're doing social activities, make sure they're not there all day because the thing about being, at, you know, so into your apps or your laptop or whatever it is, is that such children end up losing social skills because they're always on their phone. Um, and then also, you can use filters online, um, web filtering software, there are quite a few. There's Kaspersky Safe Kids, there's Kid Logger. Someone told me about Covenant Eyes recently, which I hear is really good. You know, some of these apps are free, some you pay for, but give them a try. And generally, I, I find that most of, um, if you have a good antivirus on your 
child's device it helps with a lot of things but still you have to be careful you know especially for very young children you have to monitor their online usage and make sure nothing funny creeps up like my daughter was telling me the other day that something there was a funny ad that popped up but because she knows those things are a no-no she she immediately deleted it she didn't even look at it so you know that's why you need to really talk to them and then you need to be observant you need to pay attention to them like i said Part of the ugly side of the internet is cyberbullying. So look out for signs of cyberbullying. Is your child showing signs of being distressed? Is your child suddenly withdrawn? Does your child fidget when they're online and they see you? Do they act funny? Make sure there's nothing going on. And if there's anything going on, get help as soon as possible. And make sure you have a good relationship with your child. If you don't have that already, try and nurture it so your child trust you and feels comfortable talking to you to say oh look there's somebody strange talking to me online or bothering me online or sending me inappropriate messages make sure your child is able to do that okay and has you so you know make sure you have a good relationship with your child now like i said earlier we spoke about the think rule um the think um the think test is it true is it honest is it inspiring is it necessary is it kind so Teach them that they need to be kind online. They need to be. Um, it's it's very important that um, children learn things early. You know, no hurtful comments. You know, at times you see trolls, they just go and leave hurtful comments on people's pages. That would not be our children in Jesus' name. We need to teach them they should be kind to people, okay? And then, this is for me is like the most important. Put your phone down. Put your own devices down, mom or dad. Let your child see you and see a responsible parent online, not a parent who is constantly online even when they're not doing anything useful. Yes, it's okay for you to go on Instagram or Snapchat occasionally, but some people cannot put their phone down or their app down. They are constantly glued to that. And it's something we need to know. For me, because I do a lot of stuff online, I'm working on that constantly to ensure I'm not always on my phone or on my laptop because if you're telling your child not to always be online and you're you're always online 24 7 um it, it won't be as easy for them to listen okay so make sure that your child sees you being responsible online and not just browsing non-stop especially when you're not doing anything important and then um you need to monitor them i think i mentioned this before especially with small kids you might think oh you know, she's doing her assignments, you know, I've put the, um, I've, I've opened the page for her. Don't just leave your child with their device. Monitor them and make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do because they could easily click on the wrong button and guess and go somewhere else. With your, with my older children, I make, I make them turn in their devices every night, okay? Because they just need to be responsible and I need to safeguard them as much as possible. Of course, when they go, you know, go off to college, I'm not going to take their phones from them anymore. But I just want them to practice restraint, not to having their so that even when they do have their phones with them overnight, they're not just reaching out to start browsing or anything. So those are a few of my tips. Um, I hope they were useful. And um, basically, I just hope we can, you know, are able to protect our children. The most important thing, really, like I keep on saying, when it comes to parenting, is prayerfulness. You need to pray. Yeah, that's one of the most practical things you can do is pray while also, you know, ensuring that you're being a protective parent and you're guiding them and not just letting them do whatever they like. So with online learning, make sure you're aware, even with your children's schools, if they're doing stuff that you think is not safe because they're trying to learn online, you as a parent can do your research and guide them appropriately and tell them, oh no, this is not a safe resource for my child, okay? So all the best with that, and I hope um, our children are protected online. Um, If you enjoyed this podcast, please share with your friends, and I look forward to having you on another episode of my podcast. God bless you.